They're saying Las Vegas year over year will decline 1.8%. Well, Las Vegas has been off the charts for the last several years. So declining 1.8% is not a real estate crash. Hey, it's all coming to you with another video. It's been a little while since I've done a video. I've been really busy. It's been hard to stay motivated to get videos out. Although it's a big driver of my business because I can't meet with people in person. And I've been trying to find more deals, trying to get more inventory, especially from builders for my clients that are funds. I mean, there's a ton of money out there that wants to invest and and the yields are starting to get pushed down and we'll see how that all works. And it'll be interesting to see, I'm gonna talk about the CoreLogic data, interesting to see how things go in the future here with home prices softening a little bit, supply increasing a little bit, and see if some of the builders are gonna move off center of only wanting to sell to retail buyers because investors are a great way to turn the money. And so we work with a lot of builders that they can turn their money a lot more and build a lot more homes, put a lot more people to work and have a lot more income away from a perceived discount that they're giving because they're not having to hold that money longer, pay that higher cost of capital, and also do a lot of the different things they do to the home. So I'm going to talk about the core logic data. You know, it's really interesting because when we talk about core logic data, and there's a lot of other data sources out there too, but a lot of people are saying similar things. We look back into October. So we're already in December, right? But we don't want to look back in November. We don't have that data yet. We look back in October and that's getting pretty close to accurate. I think really when we look back in October, probably in January, will be more accurate, but here it is. CoreLogic data, October 2020. Um, home prices, detached homes, increase 7.3% year over year. That's much above the average that we see in the 50-year trend line, which is about 3.5%. If we look at the attached homes, we're at 4.5%. That's much right in line with the average, so that's not too bad either. Everyone talks about they only increase 4.5%. That's great. If you have 4.5% every year, that's excellent. So don't knock those numbers numbers the way that a lot of people do. Let me talk about this though. The detached month over month was 1.1%, which is pretty aggressive. It's a lot of people moving to the suburbs, a lot of demand for houses. Where we live, we're still doing record sales every month here in Seamount Springs. We have a ton of people moving out of the cities, wanting to move to these areas. The question is, is it going to stick? Are people going to be able to, as we get these vaccines going, as the job market changes for the better and worse, are we going to be able to to continue to have people working from home. So the forecast month over month is just 0.4 of a percent year over year for 2021, or I'm sorry, actually October to October next year is 1.9%. So what do you think about that? You know, the way I look at it is that we've had explosive growth. If you average this out, 1.9% is great. People are going to take these numbers and talk about a real estate crash, talk about a bubble bursting. But if you look at the 50 year trend line and you look at 1.9% and you look at where home prices went this year, we'll be happy with that. Happy for things to slow down, take the foot off the accelerator. Some of the reasons why home prices went up, you've got supply, labor, demand, interest rates, Interest rates are going to stay low. Supply is predicted to go up because you have some of the highest ever home builder confidence. So they're going to keep the foot on the pedal. That's going to cause home prices to decline a little bit. But there's still some trepidation with those home builders because we don't know what's going to happen with all the lockdowns. Um, although there's some data coming out that the lockdowns don't work. Uh, that keeping kids from at home from school don't work. But we'll see how that all works out. So that increase in supply will lead to lower appreciation. Maybe, you know, what's going to happen going forward. We'll see. Here's some markets that's just been off the charts. Maine, 14.9%. Idaho, 13.1%. Arizona, 12%. Utah, 10.8%. New Hampshire, somewhere around 10%. Missouri, 9.8%. Rhode Island, Washington, well, all around that 9.8%, 9.6%. Ohio, New Mexico, all rural markets, 9.5%. What's that tell you? People are wanting to move out of the cities. You've got San Diego is still hot because who doesn't want to move to the beach? Kind of tells me it's not always moving out of an urban area. It's moving out of an area you don't want to be in. A lot of people don't really really want to live in the densely populated areas unless it's next to a beach, right? Los Angeles is still at 7%. Vegas at 6.2%. I'll talk about Vegas in a second. Denver is still at 6.8%. I mean, Denver's been off the charts for years. Houston, 5.6%. Chicago's an interesting 
won at an increase of 5.6%. I believe that's because Chicago's been a little bit depressed. I know a lot about Chicago. If you're in the suburban areas and if you're talking about investing, these are different numbers you want to look at because there are some suburban areas of Chicago that you have better pricing, but the taxes are insane. You've got Boston still at 6.3%, Miami at 5.9%. There's a vast difference of markets there. We'll see how this all pans out because it's not just the urban areas. What's not on these San Francisco, Seattle, even though Washington State's gone up, it's been really driven by the suburban markets. New York, Chicago, I'm going to tell you, it's probably driven by the suburban markets. Now, some risky markets to talk about. Prescott, Arizona. I know a lot in the Arizona market. I've spent a lot of time in Arizona. I know a lot of people are moving to Prescott to get out in Phoenix. Prescott, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Miami, Las Vegas, Biloxi. What CoreLogic doesn't tell you in all of these is where they think they're going to be as far as a decline. You know, they say a certainty Prescott's going to decline, but what's it going to decline? Just because a market goes down now, Next year, I mean, they're talking about Las Vegas. This number's changed a lot. They're saying Las Vegas year over year will decline 1.8%. Well, Las Vegas has been off the charts for the last several years. So declining 1.8% is not a real estate crash. For me, even 5% is not a real estate crash. That could be a market correction. That could be an adjustment. You have to look at where the appreciation's gone in the last few years. I know some investors in Las Vegas, homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer, but there's definitely not a crash happening. And that goes for a lot of the market. I think next year we're going to see a lot of markets that, you know, level off. We're going to see some markets decline. There's been a lot of talk about the tourism markets. Two weeks ago, I was in Vegas and it was busy. It wasn't jammed, depending where you go. Different kind of clientele, different kind of vibe in Vegas. I was there for a very small conference. Lots of testing. Don't worry. I tend to push back when they talk about the tourism markets. In lesser cities like where we're at, we're at level red. I was in Vail all last week. Um, another big tourism market in Colorado. They're at that level orange, about to go to level red. It's all different for each state. But uh, people want to go where there's more space, where they can recreate. I don't think that you're going to see big declines in these markets, no matter what people are saying. So that was a very long update. Maybe break this into two. I don't know. We'll keep it as a one thing. Tell me what you think. Where's real estate going to go in the next year? Really excited to see see this. Who knows? I'm not going to predict against the economists necessarily. I just see that some different markets are doing different things and the investing in single family rental markets are on fire. There's such a demand for homes. People still need places to live, whether it's a rental or a home to buy. Let me know your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.